Howdy doody everyone. The tea is ready. In the super cup. It's a bit noisy today, I'm afraid. Not. I that will cool off, perhaps. Hopefully this week's going to be a little less chaotic than last week. So much juggling last week. I mean, really. Um, that's because both my daughters were back. And they had all sorts going on. In addition to everything else. Ah, my post is here. Welcome, my post. Does that mean that you're still working from home? A bit more convenient. I'm doing good. I hope you're doing as well. Certainly better this week than last week. I was a bit ill last week, which didn't help at all. Not COVID, I may add. Self-inflicted food poisoning from food I myself cooked. Took me out for two days. That was bad. Chicken, of course. Seva tends to be chicken, eggs, or seafood. Those are the most likely candidates. And I have no one else to blame other than myself for I cooked it. Well, you're at home for about a month. That's cool. Hopefully, you'll be, a, be able to catch a, uh, a few of the streams. Right, what I want to cover today is the um, some hardware changes. Last week, if you remember, um, I think in the stream we were covering the mezzanine changes. Um, it just got to a point where I thought there was too much going on um, with the uh, the amount of stuff that's going onto the mezzanine. Um, not only that, I wanted to be able to separate certain things out, like the um, <sighs> USB power delivery and stuff. Some of the things didn't go together, and having it all on one board made it awkward. Also, I was having trouble resolving trying to use the OCD and HDMI at the same time. In in the end, that wasn't working out. 
Not only that, I was also worried that I was putting too much functionality onto a custom part of the uh, part of the solution on, on the mezzanine. Um, whereas some of that really should have just been on tiles. Let me just clean my glasses. Um, so I had a bit of a rethink of the latter part of the weekend and I kind of moved back to a slightly different design which is why the uh, why the um, name of this particular stream is Honey I Shrunk the Mezzanine because it's been significantly reduced not that I've lost functionality it's just it's been more evenly distributed among other things which I should point out a sec so I want to cover that. I was going to do some rough stuff, but I'm ill prepared for it. So I've been so busy trying to get these hardware changes in before I send the designs off. And I had to get the mezzanine board. Oh wow, I can see from my glasses, amazing. Uh, I post saying each text is taken about 20 seconds. There's a long, uh, a, a long around trip that it has to go through. I have to use a kind of plug-in to bring it into o to OBS. That plugin goes off and gets it from a third party, and I forget who that is, um, which then gets it from um, Twitch. So, yeah, it's a bit crap in that regard, I'm afraid. If you want uh, a more live uh, text experience, obviously, don't forget I've got the live stream channel down on Discord. I suppose I ought to post. Um, Hang on. Let me get an invite. This always is fun. All right. I forgot the new videos. Here's a link for Discord for those that uh, are not already down there. That helps. So uh, one of the first things I wanted to do was look at the mezzanine board. So let me just switch my views. So you can see here. So what you can probably see now is a rather smaller mezzanine board with less on it, unsurprisingly. So here I've still got the power delivery stuff, two zones, kind of a west and an east zone or left and right, however you want to do it. Uh, in the middle I've got possibly a um, Wi-Fi, something that I'm considering. And then the other thing that we're going to have here is, yeah, it is more squarish. It's not quite a square. It's 50 by 44, which is the same dimensions as a tile. You'll see why shortly. Um, and I need to check which values are those. I think I know what that is. One thing I've got to work out here, so these connectors go down, you know, the west and east connectors go down to the main logic deck. And the signals that we have on those are um, uh, TXRX, some miscellaneous. Um, STM32 signals for things like interrupts, etc. and 
he rocked. There is also two I squared C channels, one for east, one for west, that go along with the tiles. This is two zones. And there's also SPI from the FPGA slash STM32, which is the link between the two. And there is um, four additional FPGA pins. So what we can do is we can add SPI peripherals, for example, that are accessible from the FPGA. So this will also house um, the LCD connector, which is this one here. And then there will probably be a slot somewhere. Let's have a look. Probably something like... Something like that. So um, the flat cable will go, will connect here, go through the slot to the other side. So what we're doing is we're looking up. This is effectively face down. Hold on a sec. Hello. There is, yeah. Do you want to come in and I'll give you it? Do you? Yeah, I, yeah, I'll give it to you in a minute. I'm in the middle of my stream, all right? Bye. Hold on, folks, just one sec. My old, she's not feeling good. Let me just um, give her some stuff. Give me a sec. Back again, folks. Apologies for that. <laughs> right, so, um, yeah, so the flat cable goes in here for the LCD, it will go through the slot and flip round on the other side and then sit on the flat surface. The components we're looking at here are effectively um, pointing down down towards the uh, logic deck. The only thing that's on the other side will be the LCD screen itself at the other end of the flat cable. And as I say, the other potential here is to have Wi-Fi. 
uh, which I'm de debating about. The ones below on either side, left and right, we saw before, which are basically the power delivery, the USB power delivery for each zone. I'm not going to go over that again because we did that last week. Let me show you the change to the um, logic deck given this. So, um, yeah, I don't know how clear that is on here because it's actually quite a bit larger now. So, we have five tiles now rather than four. That's what the extra space is taking. The board is slightly larger than it was with the narrower mezzanine in order to cater for this. So we have tile one, two, those are on the west side. A center tile, which would have been part of the mezzanine before. Then we have two uh, east tiles, one and two, total giving us five tiles, which is better than the four tile arrangement before. That's what I meant about migrating some of the mezzanine stuff out and making it standard in tiles. So, for example, if we want the uh, camera now, that would be on a tile. Probably, it would need to be on the centre tile actually. The centre tile here is a super tile because it has a couple of extra things. Um, unlike the other four tiles, it has um, it has. Um, an extra four FPGA based signals um, on the pins that would normally be provided by the STM32. So they can still do the same function as the other tiles. It's backward compatible with the other tiles from that point of view. The only difference is that it um, has those pins connected to the FPGA. That's useful when you want to drive something that requires a few more pins. So there's certain things that go on that center tile, that super tile if you like, that can't go on the other tiles. Uh, the first one is uh, the camera tile, um, assuming you want to drive it with the uh, um, in fact you can put a camera tile on some of the other tiles, but anyhow that's the best place for it. The other thing that you can put there, you notice that there isn't any P mods in the design itself. Well, there's a super tile that has P mods on it, and that sits over here as well, giving the P mods at the top just like we had them before. Okay, but they're actually supplied by the tile, so again, the option. So it's a bit more modular in that sense and better. Um, and if you don't want the tile, the P mods, you don't actually have to have them, or you can have the board. You know the super tile adapter that adapts to the P mods. Take that off, not fit that, and fit a different tile instead. You have the options as well. Um, and then the mezzanine board goes over here. You see the connectors here for that, which I've got to go and clean up in a sec. Uh, let me just check the messages here. My post is saying. Um, I'm guessing everything you are designing is available during the chip shortage. Uh, yes, it is. I've designed it around certain things um, that are that, that I've managed to get hold of. I, I mean, I had pretty much everything I need, certainly all the hard to get stuff. Not only for this, but for um, you know uh, a higher end version of this that's going to come in the in next year at some point. But there's a couple of bits I've got to pick up, but they're they're available. They're not, you know, it's things like um, resistors and capacitors and a few times. It's nothing. It's tricky to get hold of. Everything else I've got, or at least for the certain quantity that I'm going to build initially. Uh, when you have carriers with less tiles, for example, two and three. At this point, no, I think five is my optimum number. Um, I do have in my head, you know, a smaller board that just has two tiles, but that's ways away because I can't get the components I need for that until, you know, late 22, I wouldn't imagine. I mean, I can build a certain number of them, like early prototypes. I have enough components to do that, but... Uh, 
I'm not going to really focus on that that one until very much later in the year, later in uh, 22, I mean. Um, so yeah, let's zoom into this and just fix this because what we've got here, I must just switch to wiring quickly. I've just changed the mezzanine design, so I need to percolate the updates to here. Um, so F1, it's on this side, I think. Let me just double check. F and E. I think it goes this way around. Let me just do a quick copy and paste and move these over. So far, and then the other side. Hopefully, if this works out, I should be able to get rid of the old. And you just see the new, although the pins could be back to front, of course. Be a bit clearer if that's the case. Over the old ones, and you'll be able to see it a bit better. Just move this into the center. Should be a bit clear, a bit more clear now. Um, apologies, folks. Well, I seem to have lost transmission there briefly. I think we're back now. Let's keep these up. Uh, what are we missing? What have we got here? Yep. Right. Hopefully, I should all be back now. So, um, this is close to being finished. Actually, I've got to make some adjustments. I also need to get some um, some of these dumped quickly. these in okay.
Oh, these are a strange roller. Uh, 85 and 86. Hold on. That's uh, TR7. TR, let's just swap those around. Go with me. Squish these in a bit in a minute. For ah, there we go. These two are wrong as well. It's like 90 or 97. That's uh, TR9 and TR11. I got TR9 and TR11. It's 50 50, you get the right. TR11. TR11. And TR9. Okay. 1, 2, 3. Oh, this is so tight. I'm going to have to shovel this lot over in a sec. I haven't left myself much room. We can clean that up later. I'm just trying to get to a point where it's more or less done. I'll just move these a little. Give myself a bit more um, spread. I think I can probably get those a bit tighter a bit later on. So the main thing with these mezzanine connectors, so most of the lines on there are from the STM32 with the exception of these two above which go to the TX and RX, which reminds me I need to make a note on here. Um, I could, what, I could, what I was thinking of doing is taking the TX RX uh, send and return. I'm going to make a note there so I don't forget that. In other words, what I may do is have the ability to take the TX and RX from the FPGA and have it either use it on the mezzanine or have it come back down to the uh, STM32 because at the moment it's not connected to the UART and the SCM32. Um, but it could be done with some jumpers or the mezzanine. There may be an advantage there. If I want to use it as a UART, for example, rather than um, as a USB instead of a UART, rather. Also, I may want to use the UART on the SCM32 from the Wi-Fi if I do connect that up. She was always useful to have that. So I might be able to have a kind of send and return going on up the mezzanine for the uh, TX signal, and that way we get the uh, best of both worlds. So on the mezzanine, the top part of the mezzanine here is the signals. Then the bottom part of the mezzanine is really power stuff. Um, so the other thing that we'd have is probably, say, plus or minus 5 volts. Um, do I have that here? 
must I remember? So I have five volts going up and ground coming back down. top one we have the same sort of arrangement sorry on the um, east side we have the same sort of arrangement but with three volt free and um, three volt free and ground and that leaves six pins underneath on each side which are used to carry the voltage supply for the two zones so on here we'll have say uh, a positive v plus for supplying the west side and then the v0 ground return on these pins that voltage and then we have the same thing going on 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 the on the west sorry on the east side not the west side the other one was the west side on the east side we have ground again in the center ground return for the high power supply power delivery which be power delivery and then on the right here we have the v plus and then the voltage and current comes out from here to these two tiles for the west out from here and for these two tiles for the um, east so there's two separate zones now that might be useful if we want to supply supply a, a it means that we could do 100 watt on each with the usb power delivery giving a total board capacity of 200 watt which is quite nice um or 60 watt and 60 watt depending on how we you know Probably 60 watt and 60 watt initially with uh, 100 watt options on each side. The centre one needs to be powered. I'm not sure whether we power the centre one from the east or the west. I need to just I need to check which is more convenient um, because I can't remember whether this is positive or negative. If that's positive, then we'll supply voltage from you know the east. If that's positive on this side of the connector, then we'll supply it from the west. So we have zoned power supplies. That's that's kind of quite a useful idea. Not only could we run two different voltages if we needed to, um, which I wouldn't normally recommend, by the way, because it, you can make it very confusing. And if you mess up and put the wrong tiles on the wrong side, you could get yourself into trouble. But there are occasions where that would be useful if you know what you're doing as an option. Um, the other thing I'm going to have down here, by the way, this is, I'm going to change this. I'm going to use a um, small 10 pin um, SWD debug cable. Um, I've, I've found a source for right angle ones. Because um, you can't use the vertical ones. Because if you think there's a tile on top of here, there isn't enough headroom. I tried it. If you look at the, um, the JTAG um, connectors, the height of them um, so if you look at this, I know it doesn't look like much but when you add that to the, to the connector, the JTAG connector, the distance between the two is greater than the height available in between two layers um, so you can't do it so I've been trying to source some right angle connectors and I haven't done the footprint for those yet but I have found um, some connectors for those so that will, that will allow it to come out here the only problem with them is I haven't found a surface mount one I've only found a through hole one um, I mean it's quite high pitch 
to do the through hole soldering but uh, you know, it's, it's only 10 pins five on each side it's actually quite easy to do Um, what else can I say about this? I mean, you know most of what's going on here. You know most of the components. We've got the hyper RAM there. We've got the flash here, um, which share between the two. Um, we've got the two USBs on the bottom, both connected to the STM32. There's two USB channels if we need them. Um, there was the possibility of maybe doing one as a a mount or a DFU type device and the other is a serial possibly. The little button here is for DFU booting um, and I'm ring and ring whether I put this quick QT connector in here for I squared C. It's a possibility I'm just not I haven't quite made up my mind whether I want to go with that or not and then we've got a couple of LEDs. One can be driven from the FPGA, one is from, driven from the STM32 and illustrates the status status of programming etc and then what you possibly can't see is just underneath here is the SD card on the reverse of the uh, reverse of the board so I reoriented the STM32 in this design as well so that the crystals you know I've got the uh, lower frequency crystal and the high frequency crystal all of these are down at the uh, bottom now they were on the right hand side so I've turned everything around which has made some of the wiring better actually some of the routing better between the STM and the um, uh, ICE 40 uh, but it's also there's still some outliers that aren't quite as good but it, overall it, I, I'm, I'm more pleased with the routing it had just gotten to the stage where so many things had changed that the positioning wasn't right anymore for all of those changes. And this quite often happens. And you just get to a point and you look at it and you think that it will be better a different way around. So whilst I was changing it to add in the fifth, uh, you know, the fifth tile, fifth element, <laughs> multipass, then um, I figured I'd just turn it all around. Um, I try to re-optimize it again. Uh, this is close to being done. I've still got to wire in the debug. Um, I've still got some power stuff to do. I've redone the cap footprints, which were wrong, and the resistor footprints, the 0402s, which were all wrong. I fixed those again. Um, I need to make some small adjustments to this, and I've got to route the power. And that's it, pretty much done. So I am, fingers crossed, going to knock this on the head this week. I'm making the extra effort to try and try and get it there. I haven't seen Laurie yet today. Yeah, Laurie. Oh, by the way, um, how's my audio, my post? Apart from my creaky chair and the fan noise off my noisy laptop. I'm hoping uh, that the levels are okay. Hi, Laurie. So yeah, that's the change in the layout. I actually prefer it as well. It looks a lot more like this in many ways because, you know, that's a similar sort of, this is the same size. This is the old eight line tile prototype um, with two tiles and the um, ice core in the center. Only this didn't do five tiles, it only did four and some PMOS. But dimensionally, it's the same. Just a bit of a blast back to that, that design. Um, I must go at 9, nine o'clock sharp today, guys, because I've got to take my um, eldest back. Assuming she actually gets out of bed. She just had a, a booster jab today. She's not feeling um, particularly bright. She's telling me she's got flu symptoms already. 
already had a cold, which didn't help. I've got my booster actually. Um, about a week, I think. Right. Any questions on the design, guys? Or on the changes? Fire away. You're fully boosted, are you, Lauren? Well done, mate. Very good. I'm getting Pfizer, I think, this time. I had the... Um, um, Had the UK one before. I forgot what it's called now. The um, the Oxford and AstraZeneca one. Oh, you've had three lots of Pfizer, so you've not had the mix and match then, Laurie. I thought they tried to mix and match them. I had the Astra's AstraZeneca before, so I'm getting the Pfizer this time. Uh, what tiles have you planned that you have not shown, says I post. Okay, let me... I did make a list somewhere, actually. Uh, I want to do, like, a, a VGA one. I want to do a HDMI one. Uh, I'm thinking of adding USB to the HDMI one as well. Just a single USB host. Um, seven segment one. Um, the multi USB one is one I was looking at with several USB connectors on it. I swear this chair's gotten worse. Um, breadboard one you've seen. How many actual segments? Digits. It's three digits. It's this one. It will look something like this, I'm guessing. I haven't got the final design for it yet. Um, it won't have those audio connectors on my line. Might have a button in addition to the seven segments. So that's uh, free I2S. Possibly, I'd need to put a codec on there really for that, wouldn't I? Um, let me add that to my list actually so I don't forget. Um, audio. Yes. Um, a cam co camera. Camera tile, obviously, which I've mentioned before. Uh, for an OVR camera. Um, obviously, there'll be the P mod adapter for the super tile. Um, Thinking of maybe doing like a retro tile for gaming. Um, there will also be a couple of motor tiles. So there's going to be a, a motor driver tile. And I've changed the chip I'm using on that. I need to come back and we'll, we'll, we'll do that on um, one of the streams. Um... So I'm going to make that a higher capacity, higher voltage than the previous one I did. Step motor one, which is trinamic based, which I've more or less designed. I've got to finish off. And do, 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 do. I'd love to do a brushless motor one, but that's not going to be until sometime next year. Because I can't get the chips. It's just impossible to get the chips. Um, it's based around a Texas chip, gate driver chip. Um, 
HDMI lorry I'm going to do on the tile and I think um, I will also have uh, a USB host on that very same tile as well so it'll be one HDMI and one USB that's what I'm planning also a kind of a power MOSFET tile for driving relays that kind of thing or high current nodes what would be the max resolution? Well, the um, HDMI is limited really by the bandwidth of the ICE 40, but the tile will go higher. Um, it's really just down to um, how hard you drive it. And don't forget the tile is going to be compatible. You know, there will be an ESP5 version of the Logic Deck at some point next year, and that can dry it even. Try, drive it even higher but from the eyes 40 I'm not expecting really to go much above 644.80 just a bit rate's going to be tough to do for the eyes 40 beyond that I can't remember what the maximum was we it was looked at before If you want to go beyond that on the ICE 40, you have to have specific chips, basically that accept parallel data rather than driving the HDMI, you know, rather than driving TMDS directly. Um, what else have I not mentioned? Um, there'll be an Ethernet tile. That's another one I've got on the design. Um, design board prototype tile obviously which you've seen um, maybe a capacitive touch one um, another idea I have was a mic array that might be quite an interesting one to do And also like a logic analyzer tile, which might be quite interesting. You know, basically, uh, with some level shifters and stuff on, and some connectors, so you can connect up some nice, you know, uh, logic cables to do that kind of thing. Um, probably do our hyper hyper flash tile as well. Um, there is. I, I am working on a um, high-speed USB tile, USB 2 high-speed, but that won't work with um, this. That requires um, a 1.8 volt switchable tile voltage, which we will be able to do with the ECP5 version later next year but not with the ice 40 to be fair but that only really makes sense on the ecp5 anyhow and then we will you know then you could add more than one of those tiles if you wished potentially and you could do kind of lunar type stuff with it if you really wanted to um i hear that luna's been delayed until december now the shipping of that i'm really about that I really wanted to get my hands on those but yeah we're not going to receive those until next December now I'm saying because of parts yeah the Glasgow light tile will be a level shifted IO protected type tile I was nicknaming it Edinburgh the Edinburgh tile An optical tile. What do you mean by optical exactly?
damn it, nearly empty. A tower with some sort of optical communications on it. What do you mean for like audio communications? I think it's audio, isn't it? Main use, or are you thinking of something else? Could be audio or digital. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, you'd need an optical transceiver of some sort. I haven't really looked at them. I don't know what they have in terms of requirements. Data wise, IO wise. Um, on a normal tile, we've got up to 12 IOs. Um, that can go to 16 for the super tile. Uh, I've seen a few projects where they use LEDs to play around with, but an SPIF. Do you mean SP diff? Connector arrangement would be good. I've never really played around with the optical stuff. I know very little about it. Um, I'm hoping that other people are going to be doing tiles as well, by the way. That I don't have to design every single one of them. Have you done any um, PCB design, I post? If you can operate a bit of keycad or eagle, it's easy to make one. Have a hack around with one. They're definitely very hackable tiles. I will have the eagle templates for them and um, also some keycad templates as well. Um, it's actually quite easy just to import them to keycad if you need to. Anyhow, I think I've got a good long list that's going to keep me busy, certainly for the next year, tile-wise. And I'm sure, as I said before, others will come up with all sorts of tiles. Um, the HTML tile as well, the first one I'm going to do actually uses a, um, a proper level shifting interface. So it protects the, um, the FPGA as well. That's the plan. I've bought a bunch of the chips to try. Will you be doing any other core boards? Core boards. Are you talking about ice core? Laurie says he's going to have a go at uh, some tiles, maybe using the keycad template. Um, like that guy's MX. I did look at doing um, an ECP5 core, but fitting everything onto that is a bit tricky. So it's still out there on that, possibly. But it's a lot less urgent for me, to be quite honest. I want to get the tile stuff done first. I think tiles are, are really the, um, the way forward right now. This, um, does not extend all of the way. I 
dimensions, by the way, are 150 by 88. That's the new um, version of the board. Which reminds me I should just put these in. Whilst I remember. It's that one. I figured I'd better do these before I forget the damn things. It's because when I resized it, I destroyed all the lines. Yeah, I can't wait to get this ordered because I want to do some work on the code. I'm um, chomping at the bit to get on with the black crab stuff. But I'm kind of not letting myself do that until I've got this damn stuff off and ordered. Uh, what's this bell for? I need to have a look at that. Um, I've just got to finish the power plane and stuff on here really. It's a little bit tricky. I've got a few things. I've got one of this um, button up and the LEDs as well. But that's it. And I also ne need to do an optimization pass as well. Just see if I can remove any extraneous, extraneous components. Your board will nearly be as large as the RPI. CM4 IO board. Ah, yeah, you mean this? Let's have a little um, comparison, shall we? I mean, the Raspberry Pi board is probably um, wider. Slightly bigger. Yeah. It's about the same height. Mine's slightly taller, but not by much. So, yeah, nearly the size of it. But I quite like bigger boards. I get bored of these tiny things. We've already done lots of tiny boards, anyhow. I like to be there, um, you know, plug things in properly. I'm looking forward to having something much more robust. It can be a nightmare trying to work on stuff when it's there's just wires and stuff everywhere, and it's flipping and flopping, and the connectors aren't good and I'm really looking forward to being able to use something like this, particularly um, doing some automation stuff and robotic stuff. That's going to be really fun. I mean, the size is deceiving, really. They're still quite small balls. I mean, they're not like these little feathers, that's for sure. But 
be good if I could get a plugin for Discord to pick up Discord channel in OBS. I don't have that. Laurie says, um, my Q's Pi and my gen code is more or less working. Oh good, well done. Uh, should work with DSP and QSPI nodes. Yeah, I need to try and get it running on the um, Black Ice MX with the Black Crap software. That's that's my next important software or oh, firmware code that I've got to do. Um, so it should be there when you have your Rust code working. It's running on Black Ice too. That's good. Um, so you're using what you were using before, i.e. the um, Arduino Quad SPI code, right? That Richard wrote to do your testing, or a, a version thereof. Focus on this seems to be a bit sluggish sometimes. Weird. I've noticed that a couple of times now. I mean, given that we're using on the MX and obviously on the um, Logic Deck, uh, the STM32 is F7 based, STM32 F7. There must be an F7 supported Arduino port um, trouble is I don't have the expertise to get anything running on Arduino it's just not my um, area of expertise there was um, just trying to think I think there's a um, there's a list of supported ones officially Officially, Arduino supported ones, but also there's a um, oh, like an unofficial list as well. And Arduino themselves use an F7, although a different um, diff a different chip to the one that I'm using. They do have an F7 in their range, or have had. So it might not be too difficult for somebody that knows what they're doing in Arduino land. But it would be nice to have Arduino support as well for those that want to go down that avenue. People that are uh, more familiar with that than I. And then, then people will have the choice. may always be possible to do a version of the MyStorm STM32 HAL based code as well. If you need to do that, update that for Logic Deck. Possibly. Although getting support for the Q's Prime might be tricky. But doable, I guess. I think my first target will likely be the Rust stuff rather than, uh, than C++ or C++. Anyhow, that's good news that your stuff's working now for the Q's Pi and my gen side. That's excellent.
Okay, right. What was the other list I need here? Those are just the changes I need to make on the IOs. Don't need to do any of the other stuff. Yeah, if I do an Ethernet tile, I'm going to have some leftover pins. Unless I do RM instead of RM2. Is it RM12? I mean, it is one that uses more pins than the other. I don't remember which way around it is. Um, but I've got some lamb chips. Actually, those are really difficult to get hold of as well now. I've got enough to do a few boards. It's the older version. The lamb, 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 lamb. I can't remember the part in the middle. Hold on. So this was a tile I was working on which is based around the um, LAN 8710. So I've got a few of those chips that I can use to make, I don't know how, however many I've got, but I can make a few. So that's kind of work in progress. Um, but I've got some pins left over, so I was kind of wondering what to do on that. Um, oh, and this is the old dimensions. What happens if I update that? Probably break it completely. So we're going on dimension over here. Oh. Oh, there's a position change. Where is that? It should be 44. Yeah, I mean, one option is you could combine, say, Wi-Fi and um, an Ethernet. That's a possibility. Um, I think I only need nine pins for the Ethernet, which leaves another three FPGA pins. This probably isn't enough for um, Wi-Fi. Might be enough for um, a USB host or something. Um, How do we put these up? Signals RXD1, RXD0, TXD01. Um, yeah, that looks good. Oh, it's not working. Oh, I'm doing MDIO on there. I'm not using D8 and D9, which is weird. I'm using the interrupt. I'm not using the mixed signal. What do I use? Oh, I see. Yeah. So I've got two. If I, if I. Hold on. So on this, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. So I've got two. Oh, that's because I've got e clock. What are you doing on e clock? Oh, I'm, I'm clocking rather than using a crystal. I see. So I've got two more FPGA pins that I can use. Um, I mean, I'll probably keep it the same. I could add some. Uh, the LEDs have already been driven on here, I think. Yeah, already covered. Um, why is there? There is a TX clock, but I'm not using that. Or TX enable. Hmm. I am using that. <sighs> yeah, I don't know how I'd use the extra pins. I could have a separate reset if I wished, I guess. Anyhow, so that's... Um, there's not much I need to do on that. That's nearly done. I might spread it out a little bit. It's a little bit crushed up here. Um, placement of these will be a bit hard because the proximity to the um, ether jack. I could just leave the exposed pins on this mixed header. Uh, the other thing, that, the other problem you get with this is this is a very tall component, so you need the cutouts for that, or you mount uh, this on the other side. That would mean I have to redo this. Anyhow, so that's one of them. Um, the other one I mentioned earlier that you probably haven't seen is... This one I've got to wire up is the... Um, the P-Mod tile. Now this is going to be strange because the these need to be underneath the tile, um, which is going to flip them around. So I might have to rewire these slightly differently. They're pretty much wired the right way around now. Something like that. If they were sitting on top of the board, but what I'd probably want is for them to be on the other side of the board, but they need to be flipped vertically as well because I want the P mods to plug in as if the connectors were already on the carrier board. On oh, sorry, on the logic deck. So relative to this they will be back to front. But that's quite easy to get that one finished. Um, and then you can add double P mods, but that only works for the super tile because you need 16 IOs. Um, we've got the power tile board. I may have shown this one before. This is really just um, kind of um, it can just sink power to ground. Um, so it can drive things like relays and stuff, which is kind of nice. Um, I think we looked at the stepper before. I was changing the um, connectors on this. I think this is the old version. Yeah, I don't have uh, iPost saying, what about a tile with accelerometer and other set of um, other sensors? Yep, you could do a tile with those on. Or you can do that maybe via the quick or stemmer connector. I mean, what would you combine it with? All you need for an, the accelerometer or IMU, excuse me, it's an integrated IMU, is... Um, 
I squared C. So it can be added to any tile fairly easily. Unless you did a tile that was just sensors, but then what else would you put on there? If you had an IMU, you're covered for accelerometers, gyro, and um, compass. Um, What other sensors would you want? Well, I would use it with a retro tile that includes buttons and joysticks and display. I mean, you can't. You could put it on that. If I was going to put it on a tile, I'd be tempted maybe to put it on a um, motor slash motor encoder tile. Given that you're putting brush motors on there and encoders, that suggests that you're going to be moving something around like a robot. So a natural addition might be something like an IMU. Yeah, the LED big panel tile would be easy to do. Um, I'm trying to remember what you need connector wise on there. What would the, um, let me just double check. I think um, memory. I did have. I did have a. Um, a P mod somebody made for me. Um, let me set. Hold on. Let's have a look. I don't remember. So if you're talking about those big panels, um, you know, the big RGB LED panels, they required, I think it's like two for each color, which is six. Um, so two blue, two green, two red, uh, a clock and a latch and an output enable, um, plus A, B, C, D. So that would be six, ten, twelve, then is that thirteen? It'd be really annoying if it's thirteen, huh? Six. So, 10, 11, 12, 13, if you include the output mode, which I think you need. But I think the A, B, C, D depends on the panel size. Um, you might not need the D on the smaller one. Otherwise, um, you know, if you need all 13, you need to have it on a super tile rather than a regular tile. Well, those you don't need it. The ones that you're showing there, I, I posted showing a pixel, uh, showing a picture of the Pixie Chroma. Those are the um, serial LEDs that they're using. I think they're not individually addressable. Oh, sorry, they're not individual LEDs um, driven by serial arrays. Those are serial LEDs proper. Those are easy to drive because you just use um, 
you know you just have to use the either the uh, the neo um, what is it the neo protocol neo protocol or the AP, APA protocol is the other one that's popular with those two neo pixel or APA protocols they're slightly different serial protocols and you just daisy chain the LEDs together um, what you might want to do is if you had a very large number of those rather than one long chain you could have multiple chains so you could have a tile that's capable of driving you know 12 chains or something crazy and if you had five of those tiles you'd have five times five you'd have 60 chains that you could drive on this that would be just awesome that would be an awful lot of LEDs and current wise you know you could easily deliver that on tiles um, What's a hub 75 type connector? My post. Used on the LED panels. What do you mean like the um, IDC? Not point one inch dual row IDC what is it um, it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, eight. yeah 16 pin or two rows of eight 0 0.1 Finish off the um, little mezzanine over there. Put that back up so I don't forget. Yeah, can you imagine a fully populated with LED pix um, Neo Pixel or APA drivers? We had up to 60 chains. I don't know how much you could put on each chain, but that would be one heck of a lot of LEDs, wouldn't it? That'd be serious. That would be some Christmas decoration. Someone will do it, guaranteed, just because they can. Right, so that's all the tiles covered, I think. Um, net mezzanine, double P mod, which I covered before. Multi USB, which I've covered before. The dual motor encoder, which I did a whole thing on. The breadboard one, which I mentioned before. The proto tile. Mustn't forget about that. Um, Yeah, I think we've covered all our angles. Yeah, all our tile angles. I mean, we could do a. Um, there's another display. We could do a parallel LCD tile because that needs, I think, 12 pins, if I remember correctly. You need eight for the data. You need a read, you need a read, right, clock, no, not clock, read, right, 
updating command uh, reset so that's 4 plus 8 so that's at least 12 pins a synth tile I don't know I think all, a lot of the synth, synth products nowadays tend to be um, everyone's into analog rack mounted modules aren't they which I find nuts I mean that's what we used to build back in the 70s and 80s out of electronics not quite sure what a synth tile would be would it be digital are you talking about some specific um, thing I mean what would be good is some higher end tiles that maybe could do faster ADCs possibly or um, a digital signal generating tile that would be kind of cool pretty much a tile with connector holes in it maybe in a pass through circuit are you talking about synth? Music synth. I don't know what's important for a music synth. I guess you probably want to have things like MIDI, um, digital audio, in and out, um, maybe multi channel. I don't know. I mean, you could do an awesome audio channel, high end audio. If you wanted to the FPGAs There's all sorts of weird wacky things you could do so for example um, there's a good chip out there that does four um, 100 base T ethernets on one kind of Mac so you wire the Mac part of that into FPGA and then you've got four ethernet 100 base T's you could have that on the tile um, not sure if you could fit let me just do a test. Can you fit a four way Ethernet? It's tricky to fit that in because of the number of connectors you need. I can hear beeping. I was just trying to think what it was. I know what it is. It's the dishwasher. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, let me just do a quick search for. Um, I've got some amazing amount. I wonder how much room the connectors would take up for something like that. So if I use like a GLX type block, I can get. Um, I don't know if I've got the library here for it. You can get a block of some um, like RJ45s. But no, I did have the library. I remember using it on another project damn not individual ones but like a four way yeah hmm I'd have to look at that but you could have a um, you can build your own you know network router and stuff 
plus you can do a poe type um, affair plus you can do it an industrial communications tile that handle things like rs4485 and can that kind of stuff uh so what's that saying my tiny fpga synth had midi audio and quadrature for knobs yeah it'll be easy enough to do you could have a few knobs on the tile actually you know the encoders How do people connect to MIDI nowadays? I'm guessing they don't use the old MIDI connectors. I guess a lot of it's done on the USB and Ethernet, isn't it? They used to use like D-type connectors, didn't they? Or was it those DIN connectors? I don't know what the modern equivalent or options are connector wise for MIDI thin connector mm. So when they use USB, is it just uh, MIDI over USB? It's like a MIDI device. I mean, for that to be useful on an FPGA, you'd have to get the host stuff working that could talk to a MIDI device. Probably be a lot easier just to use the old MIDI connectors, to be quite honest. Which, which, which DIN connector was it, Laurie? Was it like the PS2 connector? Um, or was it, uh, was it like a higher pin count version of them? Because I forget. So you could probably get a couple of MIDI connectors on there on a tile along with maybe some digital audio type connectors oh of course pick wow that looks like an almost guitarish keyboard Yeah, is that the larger DIN connector rather than the smaller one? Difficult to judge size, it looks like a, a bigger DIN connector. Those are a bit more tricky to put on a tile because they're going to take a bit more room. You can do it. This is a seven pin. That's all my fluids gone, drunk, I am hydrated. But yeah, it's a good idea, audio or synth type tile. We'd have to think carefully guys about what you want on there. You can either do that yourselves or I can add that design in. Why is my wife giving me some mint sauce on my desk? And she last came in. It's like subtle. Put it in a fridge. Mm. Oh, more picks. What's that? Oh, look. So are those in? Is that an encoder then? Hmm. 
What do they call, do they call those key tars? The keyboards that you can hold like a guitar. I just remembered that uh, LCD connector needs to be offset actually. If I remember right now. Can't remember right how much then. My laptop is so hot. It's the worst thing about this laptop. It really burns up. It's very powerful, but boy, does it get warm. Particularly when I'm streaming or doing anything intensive. At some point, I will need to get OBS working on my desktop. I need to update my desktop anyway. That's a next year job, not this year. So I refocus again. Uh, the keyboard is the Wii one. It was cheap and had the old MIDI connector. Yeah, I've never seen one of those before. It's even colour coded look. Presumably for a Guitar Hero like game. Rock Band 3. Mm. Yeah, I've never played that on the Wii before. Mind you, my Wii's got so much dust on it, I can't uh, even remember the last time. I mean, I never really used it anyhow, it's the kids mostly. I can't remember the last time they used it. I think they used it a lot for the dance games. And I think at one point my wife used it for um, uh, exercising and stuff. The, was it the Wii board or something? That was mad. You do skiing and stuff on that, I seem to remember. Downhill skiing and slalom. I swear my chair gets squeakier every day. I'm going to um, enjoy throwing this out at some point when I get a better replacement. I can't quite bring myself to do it yet because I only bought it this year. But it is a little bit broken already, quite frankly. I do seem to get three chairs. Right. Okay. Um, is there anything else we need to cover? Uh, PS2 plus Game Pass. What else is on that list? I guess you could easily put some sliders on there as well and then read them with the analog signal 
they're kind of cool. Well, we only have one outage so far on the stream, and that's pretty good. I can't quite understand why sometimes it does much worse than other times. I haven't found the pattern yet. I mean, I did fix some of the network problems. There's still something that does that interferes with it intermittently. Bamboozles me as to its exact nature. Right. Okay, guys, I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, it's just, just guys. Today. I'm gonna call it quits for today because so I've got to go and um, deal with my eldest, see how she's feeling, whether she actually wants to get back home or not tonight. Um. I will be on Discord later and I'm going to get this hardware finished this week, which means getting the logic bench done and ordered and also getting probably the mezzanine done as a minimum. Uh, the tiles can wait a bit. I've got a few tiles that I've already finished in terms of design, so I'll order a few of those as well. The obvious candidates, like, for example, the Proto tile. There's a few others I went through as well. So, um, I'm hoping I can get this hour ordered. Then I can go back and work more on the Black Crab software. So maybe we can cover some of that on the next stream. And uh, maybe I can get the Rust Black Crab stuff working with uh, the Q's Pie. That would be nice. Looking forward to that. I, probably, I can probably get it working on the Black Eyes MX. That's what I'm going to target first. Once so I get it working on that, I will then be ready for the uh, logic tech when it comes in. Okay, so if there's no further questions, folks, I'm going to call it um, call it for the day or for the stream specifically. Um, we will, of course, be continuing this conversation down on Discord. Okay, thanks everyone, and uh, take care, and um, I'll see you all next week if I don't see you before down on Discord. Okay.